This is Kat with Vita Halik, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a mala. Now, these are traditionally used for meditation or a yoga practice, and they are generally using gemstone beads and wood beads. Now, you can see that there are many different gemstones that you can use, and I'm not going to go into all of their meanings here, but that is part of a mala, so you can definitely check that out on the website as well. So I just want to show you how to kind of construct it. And the main thing about these is that they feature what is called a guru bead. So I'm going to show you my one here. And this rose quartz guru bead is my bead there. And you can see that the guru bead itself has a little cross section because it needs to accommodate a row of strands going across this way and then a row going down. So inside that little bead, it looks like a little T. And now this is the tower bead. And that kind of attaches to that, and you'll see that in just a minute. But I wanted to add a little bit of extra flourish, so I added a Buddha and another wood bead and a little nice little tassel. So I'm going to be making a very similar style to this. Now this is going to be your Tibetan style, and that features three of your marker beads here, which are my wood beads here. So it just depends on the amount of beads. Now a mala is always going to be 108 actual um, prayer beads that are which are what these are and then you're going to have your marker beads as well so it's completely personalized you also don't have to follow any of the spiritual practices for, to make these really beautiful pieces as well and over here i do have a um this is a zen style so it features seven down here and then 14 and then 66. now i just want to show this to you because we do have some really beautiful 10 millimeter gemstones but just so you can kind of see how large this is i'm just going to pick it up for a second so you can see that most often people carry them in their hands or they'll wrap them around their wrist several times to get that sort of look. But depending on how many gemstones you use and the size, I'm sorry, depending on the size of gemstones you use, you'll be able to adjust your size of your mala, but it will always contain 108 beads plus your marker beads. You can also just make a mala with just 108 beads going all the way around. And this is a different style of that guru bead. And because this is 10 millimeters here, I am using a beading wire as opposed to a Eslon cord, which I'm gonna be using for my mala today. And one last thing before we kind of dive into actually making our malas. I have over here a couple of meditation bracelets and I did do a separate video on these just showing you how to make those but it is a very similar technique and this is using that same guru bead as well. So you can get a little bit more of a clear picture on how that sort of T works inside. So I'm gonna clear a little bit of my space here before I get started. So for my mala today, I'm going to be using these beautiful orange aventurine and these lapis lazuli marker beads. Now I'm gonna be doing the Zen style, so I'm gonna need four marker beads. I have my little tassel here, and I'm gonna be using a wood guru bead. Now I did bring out a different guru bead that wasn't attached to anything, just cause I kinda of wanna show you how it looks. So you're gonna have a large hole on the bottom and then two smaller holes on the side there, creating that T. And then you'll have your tower bead that you attach it to. So I just wanted to bring that out just to show you one more time how that guru bead works. And I'm gonna be using Eslon today and I've already cut 10 feet of my Eslon cord, and this is a size 18, so it's a little coiled, so I'm just gonna stretch it out just a little bit. As far as tools that you're gonna need, I'm gonna be using some twisted wire needles, and you may or may not need these. Sometimes your Eslon will slip through your uh, beads just fine without them, but it's always a good little tool to just have on hand. And one of the things that you're gonna need to do is I have a little scrap of my Eslon that I'm gonna be using, and I added that twisted wire needle to the end. And because of the nature of bringing the ends together and overlapping them, you're going to need to choose three beads here. And let's see if these guys are going to be my candidates. Now gemstones, the reason you do this is the gemstones always have slightly different size holes. So you don't wanna to get to the end and end up with a gemstone that you can't get um, four strands through. So I'm gonna slip my two strands through just like that. And I'm just testing the hole size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my needle back through the center there and make sure that I can get at least four strands through there fairly easily. And that was a little tighter than I wanted, but they do fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that off. 
and I'm just gonna repeat that with my other two beads and I'm gonna set these ones aside so that I use them at the very end and I'll show you why when we get there. But this is an important step just so that you can make sure that you're not gonna run into problems when you go to finish off your mala. And I'm just gonna use my tweezers there to pull through. That one works too. All right, and last one I'll try to get through really quick. It's also a good idea if you wanna do these with your marker beads, but I'm using 10 millimeter beads, so I know that those holes are gonna be a little bit larger. So I should be all set for that. All right, and this one might be a little tight actually. Let's see. No, oh, this one is actually the easiest. All right, so I can fit those four strands through there. All right, so I'm gonna set those three beads aside and make sure, and I'll show you when to use them at the end there. All right, so now I'm gonna take my scrap and kinda of set that off to the side as well. All right, taking your 10 feet of cord here, put your cord ends together and you're gonna find the center. There we go. All right, so here is my center point and moving back to one end, what I'm gonna to need to do first is slide it underneath my, and you know what, I'm gonna need those needles after all right away. All right, so I'm gonna take my twisted wire needle, slide it onto my Eslon there. There we go. And now what I was trying to do is slide it underneath that jump ring there, because I want to catch that. And now this tassel is going to sit in the very center, so move it all the way down to that center there. All right, just like so. So now it's right perfectly in the center, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it and just do an overhand knot and pull it through. And I'm gonna take my tweezers and just sort of place them inside that knot there, making sure to catch both of those strands and just sort of pinch it with my tweezers. Hang on, let me do this and then I'll kind of show you. Okay, there we go. So I was able to pinch the two cords in between that knot. And the purpose of this is to pull that knot so that it sits nice and snug up against that jump ring. So now you can see I can just pull my little tweezers out and push it down. So you have a nice little knot that sits right on top there. So now we need to take both of these cord ends here and get them up through our tower bead for our guru bead. And I'm already a little tangled here. That's all right. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna put my ends together here and put them up through that tower bead. There we go. All right, and that will come and sit down right on top of that knot, and you'll notice that it kinda gets enveloped into that guru bead. So this is what we should be looking at so far. So now I have my two equal strands coming out the top, so we can go ahead and separate those, because we're gonna need to get them through our guru bead. Taking one end, slipping it onto the twisted wire needle. And here's probably the trickiest part about this whole process is getting it up through. Now you can just see I just took my kind of my finger there and just gave it a nice little curve because we're gonna need to go in through the bottom and out through the side of this guru bead. So making sure that I do have the bottom there. There we go. In through the bottom and out through the side. Now this could take a couple of minutes. So I might do this, I'm, gonna, I'm hoping I can do this quickly for you here. But if not, we'll, we'll show you what it looks like. Alrighty. There we go. All right, so you can see I just kind of got my needle in there and just to curve around. So that is one side there and you just pull your whole strands all the way through without getting them knotted and tangled terribly. We, <laughs> there we go. All right, so that is one side, and it kind of got twisted there. 
So I'm gonna do the other side, hopefully quickly here, and then we'll be ready to start our knotting. Okay, so I finally got it in there, so I'm just pulling my Guru bead together. So now you can see that I have my tassel, my tower bead, and my Guru bead, and now we are all set and ready to begin adding our gemstones. So you're gonna be working with one side at a time, so what I recommend is kind of just setting one side off, off to the side. And I'm gonna move back to my twisted wire needle and just kind of move it down a little bit because you're gonna have a lot of cord to be working with. So the first thing is, and this is a choice that you can make, you can start with a knot, which I'm going to do, or you can start with your first gemstone. It is entirely up to you. So go ahead and this is the exact same technique as pearl knotting. So if you've done this before, you'll start to understand. So just loop it around your fingers pull it all the way through and then you'll take your tweezers and again kind of slip them into where the knot is so I'm grabbing where I want my knot to be through my knot there and then I'm just pulling it tight and then releasing my tweezers and giving it a nice little tug on the way down so I'm gonna start with that knot right there so next I'm gonna take one of my gemstone beads here, slip it on, slip it all the way down, just like so. And again, wrap it around my two fingers, pull it through the back, and that's just how I tend to do my knotting. You can do it however you like, it's all the same result. Take my tweezers, place them onto my little knot there, or onto where I want my knot to be, pull tight, and squeeze down. So that's the whole process really once you've gotten your mala started. Oops, I lost my needle there. There we go. So what I'm going to continue to do is I'm like I said I'm going to be doing a zen style. So I'm going to be doing seven beads and then I'm going to come back to just show you the difference with the marker bead and then uh, we're going to continue going all the way around. Okay, so I've added seven beads just by doing my knotting. So you can see how really beautiful that blue cord is looking in those orange beads there. Now you have a couple of options before you add your marker bead. Now you can see in this one here that I did add a little gold embellishment and that was because on these wood beads, those holes are a little larger than I wanted them to be. So instead of double knotting it, which is another option you'll have, um, you can add a little embellishment on either side. Now in this one here, this is actually strung. So these are crimp covers and crimp beads to kind of secure that cord as you work. And I'll have a tutorial on that as well. But because of my lapis beads here, they're actually gonna fit pretty nicely, but I am gonna show you sort of how to do that double knot. So if you've gotten to your seventh bead and you wanna add a double knot to it, you'll simply just do another knot. But when you go in with your tweezers, I have a little tip for you here. To get it to sit where you want it to sit, you'll actually be pinching underneath the last little knot that you strung. So that will kind of come and sit, and that way you'll kind of create a large knot that way. So you won't really see it that much when you add your marker bead on. So I'll show, show you really quick here. So yeah, so you see it just a little bit more, but that way you keep that nice little knotted section in between. So I'm just gonna do the same here. I'm gonna do a single knot, and then I'm gonna do a double knot. And then we are just going to continue on with our regular knotting. All right, so there's my single knot. And you get the hang of this and it becomes very, very fast and just nice and easy. Pulling that all the way through. And again, bringing my tweezers in and I wanna pinch a little bit below the knot, if not right on the knot. And just sort of push that down with my tweezers there. All right, so now I'm gonna continue my knotting. And what I'm gonna do, because again, I'm making a Zen style for this particular one, I'm gonna do 14 beads, add another one of my marker beads. And then I'm gonna do about they're supposed to be 66 in between, so that's sort of the halfway point. So you'll do seven, a marker bead, 14, a marker bead, and then you'll do maybe about 20. 
and then I'll come back and show you how to sort of connect it. But before you do that, do that on both sides. So I will meet you back here in just a moment. All right, so I've gotten to this point in my mala and I just wanna take a second to show you how beautiful that blue cord is coming through with those orange beads and lapis beads. So you can really see how much that color cord that you choose will affect the look of your mala. So just to review, I have my guru bead with my little tassel down here and I have seven beads on each side. I have my marker bead and then I did 14 beads, another marker bead, and now I'm coming to the main portion here. So what you can see is I have 33 beads here, but my last two, so bead number 31 and, th I'm sorry, 32 and 33, so I have 33 beads here, uh, don't have knots. And then on the other side here, I have knotted, and I have my last bead there without a knot. So this is the ending point that you want to get to. So again, you're gonna need 66 beads in this ending portion for this type of mala. Now you can do this at any portion if you wanted to tie it off over here, but you just need to make sure that there are 66. So I have one bead and then two beads without knots. So what I'm gonna do now, and this is why we test our gemstones in the beginning to make sure that we can go through that extra time, is I'm gonna take this cord here with the single bead on it and I'm going to go through that first bead on the other side and just going through it in the opposite direction. So you can see that it's tough to pull through because we wanted to make sure to test that. All right so now I'm just going to pull those two ends together and the reason why I didn't want those knots there before is because I'm going to do those knots there now. So just go ahead and pull it so it's snug. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a little knot with one of the cords here and you're just gonna wrap it through, creating a loop and then pull it through. Now before you pull it all the way down, just make sure that you give a little extra tug to the other side because you don't want this part to be loose. So before you kind of bring those knots together, just make sure that it's gonna be nice and snug on the other side. Now this can take a little bit of finagling. There we go. And I'm gonna pull that cord through and pull my knot tight. There we go. And I'm actually gonna do a second knot now, doing the same thing right where my other knot was, just for a little added security. There we go. So it doesn't look that much bigger than the other knots there, but I just, it's worth it to get that security. So now I'm gonna do it on the other side here to create that second knot. And again, this is where those needles come in handy. And just pull that together. There we go. And you can use your tweezers to get it a little closer if you want to. But I am going to just tie my second knot here, just like so. Now, another option here is you can just trim these cords and be done with it. But I like to, and this is why I like to test out three beads, is I like to try to get my needle to go through the adjacent bead on either side here. So you kind of just gotta pull your knot away and get your needle through there. And I'm gonna use my tweezers to help me out. There we go. All right, and you can tie another knot there, but I think I'm, I'm good. And then I'm just gonna repeat that on this other side here. And this is a very similar technique to, like I was saying earlier, pearl knotting. So if you're familiar with that, this is gonna be very similar. So, and now just pull through. There we go. All right, so you can see I have my two main knots there my two extra double knots, I should say. And now all I'm gonna do is come in with my flush cutter so I can get nice and tight and just trim that off and trim off my other side here. There we go. And now I'm gonna add a little tiny dab of glue. Now for this one, I'm gonna use the Super New Glue. You can also use E6000 or I also recommend using 
um, our GS Hypo cement because it comes with a nice little sort of needle applicator. But I'm gonna use the Super New Glue because it dries really fast and it also creates a really nice hard knot. So I'm gonna take one of my twisted wire needles here and just onto the tip there, add a teeny tiny drop of the Super New Glue. There we go. And just sort of take it and paint my little knot there. And actually, I think I can do that. We're gonna try with getting just a little bit. Oop, there we go, that's all you need. Just like I said, a very teeny tiny bit, which is why I recommend using the needle or just being very careful with your super new glue. All right, so there you go. It's a little dark right now because it's just a little wet. So let it dry on a piece of paper, making sure that it's not on your surface there. But once it dries, you will have your completed mala. And just to sort of show you, we have some different styles here and I showed this to you in the beginning. But just to kind of reiterate one more time, this is a different type of mala here and it's just a fun way to do this. This is an incredibly personal thing. It just Feel free to personalize it with wood beads, gemstones. You can also use glass beads as well. There is no right or wrong way to do this. And it is a beautiful piece to help you with any type of meditation practice that you might do. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our videos by hitting the subscribe button below. And you will find all of these tutorials and even more videos at beadaholic.com.